Hey there, amazing audience who have joined the revolving time today. Get ready to embark on an unforgettable adventure with us. Subscribe now and let's uncover the hidden secrets and truths together. Time is a fascinating and universal concept that affects every aspect of our lives. Uncover the hidden secrets and truths. Well my friends, today's story is published by DG here. My sister is dead, mom is in hospital, so see how I'm surviving after many ups and downs in my life. Well let the story begin and I hope you enjoy it. My name is Jeff Miser. This story begins when I was 14 years old. There was my mom and dad and me and my sister Natalie. We weren't really that happy of a family. My dad drank way too much and he and mom were always arguing. My sister Natalie became sick and mom finally took her to the doctor. She was only 12 and somewhat fragile. The doctor gave her a physical and sent her to the hospital. They ran a series of tests and said she had leukemia. They started Natalie on different treatments. She still went to school but was sick a lot of the time. She was getting progressively worse and over time wasn't able to go to school. I remember the last time she went to the hospital. Mom became a nervous wreck and all she did was cry. She only came home to change clothes and then went back to the hospital. My dad just drank himself to sleep. After a couple of weeks, the hospital said there was nothing more they could do for Natalie. She only lasted a couple of days after that. Mom and dad did not handle it well. Mom had a nervous breakdown and ended up in a mental hospital. Dad left the hospital and never returned. I was lost. I missed both my mom and little sister. My dad's parents made sure that Natalie had a nice funeral. I was never that good of a kid and got in trouble a lot but I had loved my little sister. I cried and then wondered what would happen to me. Where would I live? My grandparents told children's services that they didn't feel they could handle me. In school, I was a troublemaker and my grades were barely passable. I wasn't even 16 years old when Natalie died. An older couple who were our neighbors never had any kids. They asked children's services how much they would get per month if they took me in as a foster child. They talked with me and said I could have a room in the basement. All they would ask of me was to help around the house. We came to an agreement. They had me mow the grass, shovel snow, and a few household chores. I didn't have a whole lot of choices. I was big for my age and the Millers knew they wouldn't be able to push me around. They thought about the money and let me have my way. I actually did help them out. Mr. Miller was on disability and couldn't do much. I ate breakfast and lunch at school and Mrs. Miller made us some kind of meal for dinner. I was a loner before my sister's death and was a bigger loner afterward. I didn't join any clubs or play any sports. I spent most of my time after school doing weightlifting and other bodybuilding exercises. I tried studying a little more but it was hard for me to learn. The school kept sending me to advisors to talk to but I never got much out of it. I was now a junior and knew I only had a year and a half to go. I had to do a book report and actually went to the library. I decided to write my report on physical training. It was something I knew. As I was writing, I heard a girl say leave me alone, please don't touch me. The sound was coming from between the book racks. I walked over and saw Lori. She was in my English class. Two guys each had hold of one of her arms. They saw me and knew I wasn't a guy to mess with. Let her go or you'll wish you would have. It's none of your business, Jeff. Besides, there's two of us and only one of you. That makes it an even fight, I said. I took three steps and they let Lori go. She ran away as I grabbed one guy and threw him up against the wall. The other one came toward me and I kicked him behind his knee. After he went down, they both held up their hands, said they were sorry and that they wouldn't bother Lori again. I went back to work on my book report. I was shaking my head when Lori came up to me and thanked me for helping her out. I told her it was nothing and that those two idiots wouldn't be bothering her again. Jeff, I saw you shaking your head. Can I help you out? I'm pretty smart. She was smiling at me. I have to write a report. I know what to say but I don't know how to go about it. I'm not the smartest cookie in the jar. I can help you with that. She sat down and made an outline on how to do a report. She explained how to list things in sequence. I sat there and followed her outline. Afterward she took my paper and edited it for errors. I thanked her for her help and told her if anyone bothered her to let me know. I turned my report in the next day. And it was the first of that I ever remember getting. I waited after school for Lori to thank her for her help. She told me if I ever needed help again to just ask. When I got home, I told the Millers that I got an O on my report. It surprised them that I talked to them. Since I moved in our relationship wasn't the best. I didn't bother them and they didn't bother me. I mowed the yard and other things including keeping my area of the basement clean. I don't know how much money the Millers received each month for being a foster parent but they gave me $10 a week. I decided to find a part-time job so I could have some money to buy things. I went to the supermarket, and they hired me as a stock boy. 
I work two days a week after school for four hours and eight hours on Saturday. During the summer, I worked six days a week. I put most of my money away. Once in a while I would bring a pizza home and eat it with the Millers. I knew I was only there because of the money they received but if it wasn't for them, where else would I be? Update. I was still a loner when I started my senior year of school. I didn't dress or act like other students. I got into a few arguments and even a couple of fights. One day at lunch, Lori asked if she could sit with me. She was a nice looking girl. We started having lunch together a couple of days a week. Other days I saw her eating with her friends. She said she would help me with my studying since it was our senior year. I had made up my mind that I was going to try harder. I still had my job at the supermarket, but the days I didn't work Lori and I met at the library where she helped me with most of my studies. She was so smart that I figured she would make a good teacher. She made things so much easier to understand. She told me she was going to go to college for a teaching career and asked me my plans. I told her I didn't have any. My present plan was to graduate because everyone told me I'd never make it. Over time, we talked more and she told me about her family. She had an older brother who worked in the bank and an older sister who taught at the middle school. They were both married and each had two kids. She asked me about my life and I sat silent for a few minutes. Lori, my life sucks. My mother is in a mental institution and my dad left when my little sister died of leukemia a couple of years ago. My neighbors took me in for the foster care money. My grandparents wanted nothing to do with me. Lori had tears in her eyes. God, Jeff, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. It's not something I talk about. In fact, you're the only person I ever told the whole story to. I guess that's why I'm such a loner. I notice you seem to have a lot of friends. Yeah, I'm friends with most everyone. I'm not that pretty so the girls aren't afraid of me taking their boyfriends. She kind of smiled. The boys seem to want one thing. Once they find out they aren't going to get it from me, they usually leave me alone. There are the few who are just nice guys. They're the ones I consider friends. You're the only person I consider a friend. I have a few acquaintances at work but I wouldn't really call them friends. I guess that you give me hope that I can make it. Lori, would you like to go and get something to eat? Sure, let me call my mom so she won't worry about me. We walked to the pizzeria and shared a pizza and each had a beverage. Lori, this is the first time I've been out with anyone since the death of my sister. Thank you for coming. I'm happy to come here with you. I'm surprised you never asked before. Maybe we can do it again sometime. After that, we went out together about once a week. It was always after we finished our homework. Sometimes it was just a burger joint. We never went anywhere fancy. No way I could afford that. I took driver's training and Mr. Miller let me use his car to take the driving test. The Millers and I actually got along better. We even talked about school when we had dinner together. I would be turning 18 before graduation. The Millers told me that children's services would only pay for foster care until graduation. After that the money stopped. They told me if I wanted to stay there after graduation that we could decide on how much a month I could pay. I told them I would think about it and let them know. Just so you know, Lori wasn't my girlfriend. In fact, we never kissed or did anything lovable. I can't say I didn't think about it, but to me she was more like my sister and I protected her. She went on dates and would tell me how guys treated her. Two of them got there as kicked for trying to take advantage of her. When she heard they got beat up, she asked me if I knew anything about it. Both said they were robbed. They didn't know what hit them. They said the assailant wore a face mask. Of course, the robbery part was untrue. What do they call it? Payback, or something like that. I bet they don't bother you again. I never admitted to anything but I think she knew. Prom was in two weeks. Lori asked me if I was going. I had to laugh. I'd never gone to a school function, and this one would cost some big bucks. Besides, there was no one to ask. My only real friend was Lori and she was going with Dave who asked her a month ago. Graduation was coming up and I was just going to get my diploma from the principal. I wasn't planning to walk across the stage. Lori convinced me to go through with the ceremony. I didn't buy a class ring or yearbook or anything else. I actually went to a second-hand store and bought a robe and cap. I received four tickets to the graduation and gave them to Lori so she could invite more of her friends and relatives. I do have to say I felt good when they called my name and I crossed the stage. It made me feel proud that I made it. I did go to Lori's house for her graduation party. I met her parents and stayed long enough to eat and congratulate Lori and a few of the other graduates that came to her party. I told Lori thanks for helping me make it and that I'd never forget her. She walked me to the door and she reached up and kissed me. She said she would always remember me. When I went back to the Millers, we had a talk. I told them I was going back to full time at the supermarket and that I could give them $100 a week if I could stay in the basement. 
I would still help them with the few chores I did and they didn't have to make me dinner. We agreed to a month-to-month -month lease. They also congratulated me on obtaining my diploma. I got a raise at the supermarket and even got a few extra hours if I wanted them. After a couple of months, I had saved enough money to buy a used pickup. It was old and looked a little rusted but it ran good. It was cheap enough that I was able to pay cash for it. I got liability insurance and paid it monthly. Update 1. After about 6 months I found out the steel mill was hiring and went for an interview. The lady in HR looked at my diploma and congratulated me. She told me it was hard work but she thought I could probably handle it. She hired me and my pay was double what I was making at the supermarket. I gave my boss at the market two weeks notice. He said he was sorry to see me go. I had to buy steel-toed shoes that set me back over a hundred dollars. I started on the afternoon shift. The guys I worked with seemed to be alright. I learned my job and actually liked it. There was a lot of lifting and pushing carts around. I was glad I was in good physical condition. After a few days, it got easier. Plus they gave me other jobs to do. Some places in the plant were hot and dirty. They had showers available to clean up before going home. I took a shower most every night. Some of the guys asked me if I wanted to go to the bar after work. I told them I wasn't old enough but they said it wouldn't be a problem. I went with them on Fridays. We would get there around midnight and stay until the bar closed. They served me beer and never asked for my license. I only drank a few and always ate a sandwich with it. I would listen to the stories they would talk about. Most of them seemed to have pretty rough lives. Almost all were married and had families. A couple were divorced. They asked me about my past and I explained to them that I was pretty much on my own. I guess I could say I had some friends now. They went to the bar almost every day after work. I just went on Fridays. After a few weeks, some of the women at the bar teased me since I was the new guy and also the youngest. They were quite a bit older than me. I ended up going home with a couple of them. Of course, it was one at a time. I never told the woman it was my first time and she was getting a cherry. My friends told me to always wear a rubber. You never knew what you were getting with a bar broad. Soon I got laid every Friday. I had a few beers, got a sandwich, and got laid. I do have to say I thought about Lori and wondered how she was doing at college. My life was pretty simple and boring so I joined an exercise club. I was in great physical shape because of my job but I wanted something to do. I started meeting some nice looking women at the club. I was still somewhat of a loner. But the women started talking to me. It wasn't long before I started betting down some of the women there. The only problem was most of them were older and married. I wanted a future with a woman who I could love and maybe have a family. I stopped dating married women but did date a couple of divorced women. I guess I was looking for love in all the wrong places. One day I decided to drive out to the mental hospital to see my mother. When I saw her, I had tears in my eyes. She cried when she saw me. My baby boy, she said. Did you bring Natalie with you? The nurse told me she hadn't accepted Natalie's death. I just told mom she couldn't make it that day. I did tell her I graduated from high school and had a good job. She was happy for me. She did know that dad left and asked if he ever came back. I told her no but didn't add anything else. I gave her a kiss on the cheek and she told me to take care of Natalie. I had tears in my eyes when I left. It was extremely hard to lie to my mom but the nurse said she wouldn't get any better. It's been a good five years since I got my job. I got promoted to supervisor, but HR told me I probably couldn't advance any further since I didn't have any college experience. That wasn't any surprise but I didn't want to go back to any kind of school. Of course, having to do homework made me think about Lori. I was ready to move out of the Miller's house when Mr. Miller passed away. Mrs. Miller was moving into a home for seniors. Their house had always been in somewhat disrepair. I made an offer to the lawyer for the house and whatever belongings Mrs. Miller didn't want. Everything was quite old and run down. They accepted my offer, and the bank said I needed 20% down. I took all my savings and bought the old house. Of course, that meant I still lived next to the house I grew up in but at least I was now a homeowner. Rather, the bank and I were. I decided to start with one thing at a time and fix up my house. I saved up enough money and bought whatever I needed in cash, beginning with the windows. I used all my free time to work on my house. I was becoming a pretty good contractor. Whenever I ran into a problem, I asked my buddies at work and one of them always seemed to know what to do. I went about every six months to see my mom. Her mind never got better. I would always tell her that Natalie was doing fine. It really hurt me when I talked to my mom. I literally cried whenever I left the mental hospital. Update 2. It was close to 10 years since I graduated. Things were going fine. I was still working on the house but it was looking pretty good. 
I was now putting vinyl siding on the house. I was over at the Home Depot on a set to pick up some material when I saw a woman I thought I knew. Lori, is that you? I asked. The woman turned around and looked at me. Jeff, she said and gave me a big hug. I had tears in my eyes. She was pushing a stroller with a little girl in it. She looked to be about three years old. How are you? How have you been? I think about you all the time. I guess you got married. She's a pretty little girl. I just kept talking even though that wasn't like me at all. Jeff, Jeff, stop. Let me tell you. Yes, I was married. It didn't work out. The only good thing to come out of it is my daughter, Jenny. She's my pride and joy. What about you? Are you married, single, or divorced? I've thought about you a lot over the years. I always wondered what if. I really did care for you in school. So, what are you doing now? Lori, can we go and get something to eat and you can tell me all about yourself and I'll tell you my story. I'd like that. Let me take Jenny to my mom's and I'll meet you at our old pizza joint in about an hour. It's still there. I gave her a hug and kissed little Jenny on the cheek. I don't know why I did that. I checked out my material and put it in my truck before I headed over to the pizza shop. I got a table and waited for Lori. I smiled when she came in the door. I stood up and gave her a hug. We sat down and ordered our pizza. I told her I missed her so much and it was so good to see her. Jeff, if you missed me why didn't you come and see me? My parents still live at the same house. Lori, I wasn't good enough for you. You were going to college to make a good life for yourself. As much as I cared for you, I wasn't going to interfere with your life. Do you want to tell me about it? Lori nodded and cleared her throat. I went to college four years and got a teaching degree. I made the dean's list which means I got all A's. I dated some but had to watch who I went out with. I didn't have my protector in college. Anyway, I met the man who became my husband. We got married after graduation from college. I got a job at the grade school. And after a few years, I had Jenny. My husband had a business degree and went into sales. He took an over-the-road job where he was gone about three days a week. I was raising Jenny pretty much by myself. After about a year, I found out that Ted was cheating on me. I asked for a divorce and of course got it. Ted has to pay child support but never comes to see Jenny. I'm still a teacher and mom watches Jenny for me. I ended up moving back in with mom and dad. That way I don't have to go back and forth with Jenny. Mom and dad love her and she's a great little girl. Okay, it's your turn. What have you been up to? Well, you remember the Millers. I lived with them a while after I graduated. I rented the basement room from them. I ended up getting a job at the steel mill. It really pays good. I bought myself an old pickup truck that lasted a couple of years and then bought another one. A few years ago, Mr. Miller died and his wife went to a senior home. I made an offer on the house and contents. The house wasn't in very good shape so they accepted my offer. I spend most of my free time fixing it up. It looks a lot better than it did. You need to come by and see it sometime. How's your mom doing? If you don't mind talking about it, asked Lori. The nurses say she'll never get any better. Her mind is pretty much gone. I try to see her about every six months but it's hard to see her that way. She's always asking me about Natalie, and I have to lie to her. Our pizza came and we began eating. It felt like old times. I realized it right then that Lori was the only girl who I had ever loved. I never had love with her or even kissed her, although she had kissed me one time at her house. I loved just being with her. I kept wondering if I should tell her how I felt. After all, we hadn't seen each other for 10 years and she had a child. I had no idea how she felt about me. Lori asked me if I was seeing anybody. I told her the truth. I could never lie to her. I went out after work with a few bar broads. But to be honest I thought about you. I don't know if I like the sound of that or not. She smiled. No, I didn't mean it as a bad thing. It's just that I always thought about you. I also joined a gym to work out and dated a little bit there. Lori, this might ruin our friendship but I think I'm in love with you and always have been but never knew what it was. I've always liked you too Jeff. Do you mind being with me even though I have a daughter? She's number one in my life. I thought she was really cute and I would like to get to know her. Can I come over tomorrow and the three of us can do something together? I'd like that. I would also like to see your house. Jeff, we have to take this slow. This will be a big step for Jenny and my mom. Mom doesn't know you and she is very careful who I see. She never trusted Ted and I didn't listen to her. I know I'm an adult but I would like my parents to approve. Ted and I eloped. My dad wouldn't even talk to me. When he did he said he was really disappointed in me. Lori, I'll do my best to answer any questions your parents ask me but I won't lie. I found out that when I tell the truth I don't have to try and remember the lies. Update 3. Lori left for home and I went to my house. I began working on some repairs to keep my mind off her. Maybe I said too much to her. I never really dated but just picked up women and had love with them. 
I knew I couldn't tell her parents that. I stopped by Lori's house the next day. She answered the door. Hiding behind her was her daughter Jenny. Lori stepped back and invited me in. I stooped down and said hi to Jenny. She smiled back at me. Lori introduced me to her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Roof. I mentioned to them that I met them at Lori's high school graduation party, and it was nice to see them again. They asked me a lot of questions about my family. I told them my sister died and my mom was in a mental institution. After I said that my dad left us, they stopped asking family questions. I mentioned to them that I ran into Lori at Home Depot, and I had asked her if she and her daughter would like to go somewhere today. She said as long as I came over to meet her parents. Where were you thinking of going today? Asked Mr. Roof. I thought the aquarium would be a good place to go if Lori didn't mind. Most all kids like fish. Just then, Jenny blurted out the word fishy. Everyone laughed and Mr. Roof said I had Jenny on my side. Enough talk. Mom, we'll probably be a couple of hours and also probably get something to eat. Again, Jenny had been listening. McDonough's. I leaned down. That's up to your mommy. She went over to her mother and tipped her head. McDonough's. Mommy, peas, McDonough's. She told her, okay honey, we'll go to McDonald's for dinner. I had to laugh. Jenny was so cute. Jenny kissed her grandma and grandpa goodbye. Lori said we could take her car since Jenny's car seat was in it. I never really thought about it, but my old pickup wasn't the best vehicle if I was going to date Lori. We went to the aquarium and had a great time. We took turns pushing Jenny in her stroller. She loved looking at all the fish. We got her a cup of food so she could feed the fish, and she threw it all in at once. She asked for more and Lori told her that she could only have the one cup. As we were leaving, Jenny wanted a souvenir. I was surprised when she picked out a small whale. Lori told her to thank me because I bought it for her. She was out of her stroller and came up to me and I bent down. Thank you, Uncle Jeff. She hugged me and gave me a kiss. Her mother just smiled. We went into McDonald's and I lifted Jenny up. She told the cashier that she wanted a McDonald's Happy Mel and orange juice. Lori took her over to play in the plastic eggs while I ordered meals for Lori and me. I stood there and waited for our order. I set up a booster chair and Lori and Jenny came over to eat. Jenny talked almost the full time. I could only understand about half of what she said. After we ate, we all got in the car and Lori wanted to see my house. Jenny was asleep before we even got there. Lori and I got out and she said she liked the outside of the house. I told her I put in all new windows and put up the vinyl siding. In addition, I had added a vinyl railing around the porch. I wanted to buy a porch swing but hadn't got around to it yet. I stayed on the porch keeping an eye on Jenny while Lori took a quick look on the inside. Well, what do you think? I asked when she came back out. I like the house but it needs a woman's touch. I see you were getting ready to paint the bedrooms. Would you mind if I suggested some colors? Do you want to come to Lois with me next week and pick out the colors? I asked. Next week? Why wait so long? Didn't I tell you I worked the afternoon shift and I won't get a day off till next Saturday? I start at 3 and get off at 11.30. That means we won't see each other for a week. I was hoping to see you more often. I'd love to see you every day but that's kind of impossible. So do you want to go to Lowe's with me next Saturday? I told her we could plan to go somewhere with Jenny. I wouldn't mind that at all. We could also pick out the paint for at least one of the rooms. I wasn't that fast of a worker and I only worked on the house in the mornings before I went to work. She said she would figure somewhere to go and to consider it a date. I could feel she was hiding something. I just wasn't sure what. The following week seemed like it was a month. Lori was a teacher and there was no way I could see her. I went to her house on set and she answered the door. Behind her was my little friend Jenny. I knelt down and gave her a hug. She hugged me back and said, I want to see all the aminos. It was fun just listening to her talk. Lori suggested going to the zoo. We can stop and buy paint for the small bedroom on the way home, Lori said. That sounds good to me. Mrs. Roof told us to have fun and kissed her granddaughter. Again, we had to use Lori's car because of the car seat. She said she didn't mind. When we stopped for gas, I paid for it. We had a great time at the zoo and Jenny fell asleep halfway through. We decided to go to a family restaurant and get something to eat. Jenny was awake and asked for mashed potatoes and gravy, but she didn't exactly say it that way. But Lori understood what she meant. I mentioned to Lori that I thought something was bothering her and asked if she wanted to talk about it. She said one of the teachers at school asked her out. She was dating him before she met me again. They were going to a teacher's convention the following week and had talked about sharing a room. I asked her if she was in love with him. She told me no but that she had been intimate with him before she saw me. Her parents thought he was a nice guy and a pretty good catch. Then I met you again. Jeff, I don't want to be with anyone but you. I know I've fallen in love with you but I don't know if we can be together one day a week. 
Lori, I don't know what I can do. I don't want to lose you again and I've fallen in love with Jenny. You and Jenny are the only people I have ever fallen in love with since the death of my sister. You do what you have to do but I won't share you. So I guess it's your teacher friend or me. What days are the conference? Thursday and Friday of next week, she said. I have to attend. I'm required to go. It's about 40 miles away. Well call me by Friday if you're coming home. I bought a cell phone so you can call me. I gave her the number. If I don't answer leave me a message. The next town over is having a homecoming. There's all kinds of food and amusement rides and music. I thought I would surprise you and Jenny but I guess I'm the one who got surprised. Lori had tears in her eyes as we drove home. We never stopped and picked up the paint. When we got to her house, I took Jenny out and gave her a hug. I looked at Lori and said I hoped to hear from her next week. I got in my truck and went home. On Sunday, I went to Lowe's and picked up some white ceiling paint. I figured I couldn't go wrong painting the ceilings white. I knew I had to keep busy or go crazy. On Monday, I went to HR and asked them if there were any openings on the day shift. I had some seniority now and could pretty much choose my shift. I always liked the second shift because it worked out good for me. However, with Lori being a teacher, I would hardly ever see her. HR said there was an opening for a tow motor operator on the day shift but I would have to give up my supervisory position. The pay was a little less and I would have to work some Saturdays. Update 4. I knew it would completely change my lifestyle but I had to take the chance. I would be starting the following Monday. I knew the job already since I'd been in the plant so long. I accepted the change. I had no way to get hold of Lori to tell her about the switch. On Tuesday morning, I stopped by her house. Her mom was home. Jeff, what are you doing here? You know Lori is at work now. She invited me in and Jenny ran right up to me. I knelt down so she could hug me. It almost brought tears to my eyes. Mrs. Roof, I wanted to let Lori know that I switched to the day shift starting next week. I change jobs at the plant. I won't be a supervisor, but I will be on the day shift. I may have to work an occasional Saturday. Would you please tell her for me? Sure Jeff, I'll let her know tonight. That seems like a pretty big change. Haven't you always been on the second shift? Yeah, but things change. Thank you for passing on the message. I reached down and hugged little Jenny as her grandmother watched. I left and went home to start painting the bedroom ceiling. Her mom knew about the teacher's conference and probably figured out she would be with her teacher friend. Lori and her mom were very close. I would just have to wait and see who she chose. On Thursday, I decided to go out with the guys after work. I knew that Lori was at her conference. She was driving and her friend Connie was riding with her. I figured she would meet up with her friend Todd at the conference. A gal at the bar that I had been with before came up to me and asked me where I'd been. I just told her I never went out that often. She offered to go home with me but I told her not tonight. I drank too much and went home where I passed out. I slept in Friday and didn't do any work at home. I didn't eat breakfast and went out for lunch before going to work. It was hard keeping my mind on my work. I checked my phone about every hour for a message from Lori. There was none. The guys asked me if I wanted to go out again. I told them I just wasn't in the mood. It was close to midnight when I got home. Lori's car was in my driveway. When I didn't see her in the car, I figured she was inside. I had shown her where I kept my spare key. I walked in and she hugged me and kissed me. She was dressed in a nightgown. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be at your conference? The conference ended at 6 and Connie and I decided to come home. I dropped her off and came over her. What about Todd? After you talked to mom on Tuesday, we had a long talk. The next day I had a talk with Todd. I told him I liked him as a friend but that my old boyfriend returned to town and I was in love with him. I told him Connie, and I planned to share a room. So, here I am. Mom knows I'm here but not my dad. I told her that we would be by tomorrow morning to pick up Jenny and take her to the homecoming. So tonight we can be together. I knew I had tears in my eyes as I kissed her. We headed into my bedroom. She had changed the sheets and straightened up the room. I was sure glad I took a shower after work today. Jeff, please make love to me. I slipped off my briefs and reached in the drawer for a rubber. You don't need one unless you feel you do. I've been on the pill ever since I had Jenny. I had to think for a few seconds. I have never had intercourse without a rubber. I totally trusted Lori and was in love with her. Soon we went to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I was in the bed by myself. Lori came in the bedroom in her nightgown and robe. She told me to go clean up and breakfast would be ready. I took quick shower. I slipped on my briefs and a t-shirt and went into the kitchen. I couldn't believe that she had made pancakes, eggs, and a pot of coffee. I kissed her and told her I loved her. We sat down and had breakfast. I told her I hadn't had a homemade breakfast in years except at a restaurant. While we ate, she told me about her conversation with her mom. 
Mom said I have to choose between you and Todd. She told me that you stopped by to say you were changing your whole life around for me. I told her I hadn't gone out with Todd since you came back in my life and that I was in love with you. I also told her that you really cared for Jenny. Before I left Thursday, I told her I was coming back Friday and planned to stay with you unless you sent me away. She smiled at me and told me not to tell my dad. I told Lori about changing shifts so if she chose me I would see her and Jenny a lot more. After we talked we cleaned up the dishes, we got dressed. Then we went to pick up Jenny and take her to the homecoming. Of course, we had to take Jenny's car. When we got to Lori's her dad was home. Lori told him hi and gave him a kiss. She told him she had to pick me up so we could go to a homecoming. Mrs. Roof had Jenny all ready to go. We said our goodbyes and left. It felt like we were a family. There was a parade and I put Jenny on my shoulders so she could see. After the parade, we took her on a number of rides for kids. She asked for a cotton candy so we got one and shared it. There were a number of games but Jenny was too young except for one where you picked out a plastic duck and everyone wins. Lori wanted to throw darts at balloons and won a small stuffed turtle for Jenny. Jenny wanted a hot dog and french fries. I stood in line to order then joined them on a bench nearby. As usual, Jenny fell asleep as soon as we got in the car. Lori took me home and I asked her if she wanted to help me pick out paint the next day. She smiled and told me to stop by and pick her up. We then kissed goodbye. I really do love you, Jeff. I answered her by saying me too. The next day we went to Lowe's to get a gallon of paint. Lori picked out pink. I asked her if she was joking and she told me it was Jenny's favorite color. She told me it would be perfect for the small bedroom. I already had the ceilings painted in all three bedrooms. She picked out a gallon of blue for the middle bedroom. I asked her about the main bedroom and she said she hadn't decided yet. We took the paint to my house and then we headed to the bedroom to make love. Afterward we took a quick shower and I brought Lori home. I told her I would call her on Mondays and we could see each other on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes she could come to my house and other times I would come to hers. I told her Saturdays could be our family day and do things with Jenny. Update 5. It worked out great for the first couple of weeks. A few weeks later on a Friday, I got a call from the hospital. They told me my mom was dying. She had a brain tumor that was cancerous and inoperable. She probably only had a couple of days left. I told them that I would write over to see her. I called Lori and told her about the call and that I was going to the hospital. Lori said she would go with me, that I shouldn't have to go alone. I drove over to get her and drove to the hospital. I talked to the nurse before going in to see mom. Apparently, after Natalie got sick my mom had signed up as an organ donor. She was on high doses of morphine so I wasn't sure if she would recognize me. I went in and she smiled at me. I told her I brought someone with me and Lori came into the room. Mom saw her and smiled. Natalie, my baby girl, I'm so happy to see you. Lori knew she had a mental condition and acted as if she was Natalie. She sat down and talked to mom. She held her hand and told her she loved her very much. We talked for a few more minutes and the nurse came in to adjust her medication. Both Lori and I kissed mom goodbye. I asked the nurse what happened next. She told us that when her brain activity stopped they would remove the organs and later cremate her body as she had designated in her file. I knew it would be the last time I would see her. I thanked Lori for coming with me. Mom thought she was Natalie, and it put a big smile on mom's face. I received a call on Monday. The hospital called and told me mom passed away. She was not in any pain. I called Lori and told her, and she came right over, bringing Jenny with her. I'm all alone now. My sister and my mom are both gone. I was trying to hold back the tears. Jeff, you're not alone. You have Jenny and me. We will always be here for you. She started to cry and it made Jenny cry. I lifted Jenny up and held her as I looked at Lori. Will marry me so we can be a family. She looked at me and said, yes, I'll marry you. We got in Lori's car and went to her house. Mr. and Mrs. Roof were sitting there when we walked in. They said they were sorry to hear about my mother. I thanked them and then asked if I could have their daughter's hand in marriage. Mrs. Roof started crying. Son, you know you don't need our approval to marry Lori. We appreciate you asking us. All I ask is that you take care of her and my grandbaby. We talked about the wedding and set a date. It would be in two months and Lori would be a June bride. Over the next couple of weeks we began setting things up. Lori's sister was going to be her maid of honor. Even though I didn't know him I asked her brother to be the best man. The flower girl was easy to pick. We were getting married in a small church her parents attended. Lori made a list of her relatives and friends. She asked if I wanted to invite some of the guys I worked with. I had about a dozen co-workers who said they would attend. I found out that I could rent out the union hall for the reception. We figured there would be between 75 and 100 people all together. 
Mrs. Roof and Lori found a catering service and let them know we wanted a buffet. The wedding was wonderful. Lori's brother Jim stood up front with me. Lori's sister was the first to come down the aisle. Everyone smiled as Jenny threw flower petals down the aisle. Mr. Roof proudly walked Lori down the aisle. She looked so beautiful in a light pink dress. I figured Jenny picked out the color. I don't know what the minister said but I repeated whatever it was. All I remember was when he said you may kiss the bride. I did exactly that. Everyone laughed and clapped as we broke the kiss. We had a photographer who took pictures. Then everyone headed over to the Union Hall. It was so beautiful. We all went to the buffet and then sat down to eat. The guests kept clicking glasses and we kissed each time they started. It never took me so long to eat a meal, but I loved it. When I danced with Lori, I didn't want it to end. But she danced with her father and I danced with Mrs. Roof who told me Lori made the right choice. The guys from the mill all brought their wives. The next morning we went to Lori's parents' house and opened all our gifts. Lori's sister April and her brother Jim were there with their families. We couldn't believe all we received. Mr. and Mrs. Roof gave us a check for the wedding. He said it was the least he could do for his daughter. Lori and I left for our honeymoon that afternoon. We went to Dollywood in Tennessee. We had a wonderful time but we decided if we ever went back, we would take Jenny. We made love every night and I do mean every night. When we got home, we stopped by Lori's house and thanked her parents for everything. Jenny woke up from her nap and came in calling for her mommy. She hugged her and then hugged me. We talked with everyone for a while and headed home. Jenny walked to the room painted pink and said my womb. Final update, Lori was now Lori Miser. I wanted Jenny to be my daughter and knew I had to talk to Lori about it. I would have to get her ex to sign over his rights to Jenny, but then she would lose her child support, which was $100 a week. I told her I wanted to adopt Jenny but if I did she would lose her child support. She never did receive alimony because she made as much as her ex. Jeff, I don't care about the money but I don't know if Ralph will sign his rights away. I thought you said he has never come to see her. Why wouldn't he sign? Because he's a bast and would do it just to hurt me. We're going to visit him next Saturday. Do you know where he lives? Yes, he's got a new girlfriend and I think she's pregnant. The following said we headed over to his house. Lori was so afraid I was going to start some trouble. We knocked on the door and a pregnant woman answered. Can I help you? Is Ralph at home? We would like to speak to him. Ralph came to the door and asked Lori what she was doing there. He said he was up to date with his child support payments. I told him my name and added that Lori and I were married. His girlfriend asked me what we wanted. I told them both that I wanted to adopt Jenny but I needed Ralph to sign over his rights. Why should I do that? He asked. You would not have to pay child support payments anymore. You would be free of any medical or other payment that might come due such as school supplies and even school clothes, I said. His girlfriend told Ralph that it would really be good for them seeing they were going to have a child of their own. What if I don't want to? Ralph asked. I asked Lori to step into the house with Ralph's girlfriend. I wanted to speak to Ralph alone. She gave me a worried look but went inside and closed the door. Listen, you mother ducker. You have five days to sign a release of parental rights for Lori. You don't care about Jenny and have never gone to see her. Either you sign the form or Jenny will be receiving your social security. Believe me, I'm not bluffing. I hope I won't have to come back here next week. I knocked on the door and told Lori it was time to go. Ralph looked scared as he went back into the house. Lori asked me how it went and I told her we would find out within the next five days. Everything went along fine the following week. Lori still took Jenny to her mom's house while we worked. Maybe twice a week we would both meet there and have dinner with her parents. When we got home on Wednesday, she told me there was a letter from the court. It was a release of parental rights to Jenny. Lori and her mom were so happy. I told her that tomorrow we'd go to the courthouse and I would put adoption papers in to adopt Jenny. It seemed like forever before we got the final papers. I picked up Jenny and asked her if she would like to be my daughter. You're my daddy. She smiled when she looked at me. Yes and your name is Jennifer Miser now. She put her arms around my neck, leaned in, and kissed me on the cheek. I now had a family of my own and I never had to wonder where I would live again. Thank you for reading my story. Remember, revolving time exists because of your support, so take care of yourself and see you soon with another story.